Hey guys, Hillary here from Old World Home. Welcome back to my channel. We love to host and entertain in our home, but we don't have a very big home. So I wanted to share with you guys some tips and some encouragement for how you can host and entertain in your home, no matter how small. My first tip when entertaining in a small space is to rethink your furniture placement just for the day of the event. So something my husband and I like to do is actually move the rocking chair that's normally in our living room into our bedroom just so that there's more open floor space because we do have a lot of friends with little ones and for me it actually helps to protect that rocking chair because it's a lighter colored fabric. So we have a lot of kids coming in and out of the house. It actually gives me peace of mind knowing it's out of the way, it opens up the space and I know it's going to stay clean. My next tip is to put leaves into your dining room table if your table has that option. So our dining table does have two leaves that we keep in our basement, but when we have a big party, we pull them up and set up the table. They don't actually match our table because I refinished it, so I just use a tablecloth to cover it up. But if you're looking to buy a new table, definitely look into one that has that as an option, or just pull up a secondary table and put a tablecloth over both or coordinating ones on each. Another tip with your dining dining table is to reorient it if you have that option. So in our room, in our home, we usually keep it one way, but if we were to say host a Thanksgiving or some really big sit down dinner, I definitely could turn our table the opposite direction. Yes, it would kind of go into our living room a little bit. It won't really matter if you're encroaching on another room if everyone's going to be seated around the table anyways. But if you're not having a sit down meal and you're just doing small bite foods and you want people to move around, maybe you don't even have a dining room, one thing you can do is put food and drinks in different parts of the home. If you want people to not all stay in the kitchen, put some food and drinks in the living room. You can arrange things on a coffee table or even clear off an existing console table. Maybe you just usually have decorative items on it. Just put them away for the evening and put out things that, you know, little snacks and little appetizers that people can easily eat with one hand, they don't need to sit down with a knife and fork. You can even put candles or little twinkly lights in different spots around your home and just encourage people to sort of move their way into that space so that everyone gets to spread out and isn't all congested in one room. That actually leads me to my next tip, which is a lot of times when people are talking about hosting and they have a bigger home, they say, don't worry about cleaning the whole house, you know, just clean the rooms that people are gonna be in and shut the doors with the rest. But in my experience, in our small home, I feel the opposite. I feel like it's worth the time to clean every single room because people do use our whole house. The kids wind up going in the girls' room, friends with babies change and nurse in Luke's nursery. If people have a lot of coats and we don't have a lot of space in our coat, closet. I put them on our bed. So I actually do take the time to clean and tidy each room so that I don't feel embarrassed or like, oh, please don't go in that closet or don't go in that room. So people can feel comfortable going and using the spaces as they need. My next tip is to borrow as much as you can or that you need. So we live in our homes, you know, 100% of the time, but we only host, say, maybe 10% of the time or 5% of the time or whatever it is for you. So we don't necessarily need to have extra folding tables and extra folding chairs and ladles and crock pots. You know, we don't always need to own all of these things. So we just hosted a party for our son this weekend and I borrowed two crock pots and two ladles and we did have extra folding chairs in our basement that we've sort of accumulated over the years, but we have definitely borrowed those in the past. And then we don't have to hold on to them all year long. We can give them back and say thank you for lending them and it doesn't take up the space in our home all year long. When we host, what we typically do is put all of the food in the kitchen, either on our island or on the surfaces around, and then people can sort of serve themselves buffet style, and then come sit in the dining room or sit in the living room or go outside, depending on the weather, and that works really well for us. But something you can do with beverages, I have found this works well in our home. We usually put them outside, so if it's hot outside, then they're in a cooler. If it's cold outside, then they can just be in our sunroom or out on our deck or even just you know right outside your front door or back door and people, again, it encourages them to sort of move around and congregate. Another fun thing that we actually have done, this takes a little bit of prep work because you have to make sure your kitchen is 
pretty much clean and ready to go is to fill your kitchen sink with ice and use that as your beverage dispenser if you don't really have an outdoor space to use and then the water as the ice starts to melt just goes right down the drain. If you are able and have the space for it, bring the party outside. We again don't have a very large interior of our home, but we do have a really great sized deck. So again, we just had my son's birthday party. It was only 40 degrees outside, but we set up our chiminea that was had a nice roaring fire and put chairs all around it. I provided blankets for everybody and just told them to dress warm and they all had a great time just sitting around the fire, drinking a hot drink, and it just extends our entertaining space in an, a sort of non-traditional way or rather non-seasonal way. People just love to be in a place where they feel welcome, where they can be themselves, where they're relaxed. So if you are prepared and you're relaxed as the host, then your guests will feel that and they'll feel right at home and they will linger, they will chat, they will eat because they feel welcome in your home. And lastly, when it comes to entertaining in a small space, one of the best parts about it is that it doesn't take very long to clean up. No matter how messy my house gets, and trust me, it gets very messy with lots of little kids taking out every toy that we own and there's cups everywhere and there's crumbs. It honestly doesn't take us that long to put it all back in order because it was in order to begin with and everything has a home and somewhere to go back to. And honestly, being with family and friends and nurturing those relationships is so much more important to me than a clean house or maybe someone got a spot on my pillow or my blanket, but everything's washable. Everything can be cleaned, but that precious time with your family and friends is so much more important. So I hope you guys enjoyed these tips and as we are going into the holiday season, I hope you're able to implement some in your homes and to just open up those spaces to your friends and family and really cherish those relationships that you guys have. I love you and I'll be talking to you soon. Take care. Bye.